Concept guns. Have you ever wanted to create concept weapons? Perhaps you got inspired by your favorite game, or maybe you just saw some breathtaking 3D renders. I'm here to show you the first steps to take to create your very own concept weapons. Now, this video is going to be long and detailed. If you want a quick overview, I will drop a link to the video I made for that down below. But before we start, I just wanted to say thank you. Thank you to everyone for watching my videos. I'm almost at a thousand subscribers, which is really awesome. I can't wait to build this community of talented artists, which would not be possible without you. So once again, thanks. I appreciate all feedback, so please feel free to ask me any questions or point out any mistakes I've made. I am no expert and still make many mistakes. We all need constructive criticism to improve. Okay, but enough of the intro, let me not waste any more of your time. Let's get into it. Step one. Okay, so before we draw a single line or model a single vertex, we first need some inspiration and reference. I use an app called PureRef. It allows me to stick a bunch of pictures together like a digital whiteboard, a small place to organize my thoughts. I use a mix of inspirational pictures from artists I look up to and a few images that describe the general style or mood I'm trying to create. It doesn't have to just be guns in your reference photos, it could be parts of objects or materials you find interesting, anything that helps you picture your weapon more clearly. A great place for reference is video games like Destiny, Borderlands or Overwatch. These games are absolutely jam packed with amazing guns. And for still pictures, I usually use ArtStation or Pinterest, but please be careful when it comes to these sites. It is so easy to demotivate yourself. There are some amazing artists out there. They are so good that it makes you feel bad for not being that good. But try not to compare yourself to their art, rather just compare your art from the art you did a week ago. You know, good things take time and oftentimes they have a lot more hours in this profession. So your time will come, just be patient. I will have a time lapse in the background of me planning out the weapon, but be aware it is sped up. So do not feel the need to rush. Take your time, slow and steady wins the race. I will be using Krita for the concept art. And now before all you 3D artists leave, trust me when I say you are going to want to plan out your gun before you start creating it in Blender. Even a bad sketch will be better than nothing. So do not worry about your drawing skills. We will be focusing on design and style. I like to start with a real gun for my base. I usually choose one with a similar shape that best fits my idea. For this tutorial, I'll be using a MP5K, which is a small submachine gun. Once I've pasted in the side view, I quickly trace out the gun just to get a general idea of the bigger shapes and the design. Never feel bad for tracing. There is a huge difference between tracing to understand the subject and the material and just plain old plagiarizing. Don't worry, we will be changing the gun so much that it will not even look like an MP5. Once I've traced out the gun, I will then begin modifying it. At this point, I'm not worrying about clean lines or realistic proportions. I am just playing around, trying to find out what I need to change or add to make this weapon interesting. Don't spend too much time on one sketch as we will be drawing quite a few. No need to play it safe. This is the part to try any idea, no matter how crazy it is. Now, yes, I am adding parts and changes at random, but there are a few principles that can make the design phase easier. First is anchor points. These are key parts of your subject. For example, a gun's anchor points are a handle, trigger, barrel, or magazine. A car's anchor points will be things like its wheels. So if you add any of these parts to any shape, I promise you it will look like a gun. With that in mind, try to keep these few anchor points as realistic and practical as possible. Next is repetition. Small amounts of repetition are quite pleasing to the eyes. These could be repeating shapes, you know, fins, vents, or even just colors later on, but less is more. So try not to get carried away with it. Detail balance is the next key point. Now with smaller details, we want to balance it out by making some spots jam-packed with details and then other spots fairly plain. 
The plain spots will allow your eyes to rest, while the heavily detailed spots attract your attention. If your piece is ever feeling busy or noisy, it normally means there is too much detail and not enough simple and open areas. And lastly, your drawing should have a few practical or realistic features, such as like a usable stock, maybe clips for belts, buttons for scopes, or dials for fire modes. Adding these realistic features to make your sci-fi or fantasy elements look more realistic and believable. Even if your design is completely out of this world, it needs a few little features to ground it back to reality, just so that we know it actually is a gun. There is no limit on how many sketches you should have, but the more the better. At this stage, it is quick and very easy to change something, whereas in the 3D viewport, changes can take hours, if not days. So only move on once you're happy with the design. Once I have enough sketches, I line them all up and take a break. Just walk away, watch some TV, or go for a walk. When you come back with fresh eyes, you can choose the sketch you like the most or if you don't like any of them, simply draw a few more. Once I've decided on the sketch I like the most, I will refine it and fix any mistakes. Sometimes I make three variations of the sketch I've chosen to ensure that I'm extremely happy with the design. During this stage, I like to make sure my proportions are correct, my details are well balanced. You know, this is the last time we can make any big changes. Yes, we can change things down the line, but trust me, we don't want to do that the same way you wouldn't want to change the foundation of a house later on. Now, this part can seem repetitive and somewhat boring, but the best way to deal with this is taking small breaks. You know, two hours of well-rested work can be far more productive than six hours of tired and burnt out work. Remember, art should be fun. Another thing to keep in mind is your health. You know, sit up straight, work in a well-lit room, and I like to remember the 20-20-20 rule, which is for every 20 minutes of looking at a screen, you should look away for, at something 20 meters away for 20 seconds. This advice may seem random, but if you're going to be working on your computer every single day, these little things can really impact your health, especially your eyes, and you know what good is an artist that can no longer see? And lastly, please, please, please use the zoom feature. No hunching over, you don't have to pull the screen closer to your eyes. Just zoom in. Now, let's get back to the art. Once the final sketch is done, I like to ink it out to create a clean look. To do this, I drop the opacity and create a new layer. When inking out, I try to follow line hierarchy, which in simple terms means use thicker lines for the outside and the bigger shapes then use thin and crisp lines for the finer details. When all the lines are the same size, it makes it harder to focus on and the viewers don't really know where to look. So try to ensure all your lines are, you know, following that hierarchy. Also try to make sure all your lines are connected because later on we'll be using the selection and the lasso tool. So if there's any holes in that, you're gonna have to fix that later on and it will just make coloring and rendering the gun a lot harder. So for those of you who have made it this far, congratulations, we are almost done. It's difficult to balance how entertaining a tutorial is and how useful it is. I've been trying to mix it up a bit where I make some of my videos quite entertaining and then others more practical. Hopefully I'll soon find the sweet spot, but until then, bear with my monotone voice for a little longer as this is one of the more practical tutorials.
great. Now, once the line out is done, time for my favorite part, which is planning out the color scheme. To start, I select the outside of the line art and then on a separate layer, fill in a dark background. I usually find the colors that work the best are dark gray or dark blue. I'm not the best at color theory, so I normally play it safe by picking colors on the opposite sides of the color wheel, such as blue and yellow, green and red, and normally sticking to two or three main colors. Also, sticking to only two or three colors helps prevent your gun from becoming a washed out rainbow mess. For this piece, I've decided for white to be the main color with two secondary colors. During this part, I often use the Huel tool just to slide between different colors in hopes of stumbling into a color scheme I like. Once I've settled on a color combo, I'll drag out the rough sketch to the side. Then with the color picker, I select the colors and with the selection tool, I carefully color to ensure crisp and clean lines, manually touching up some of the spots I miss. I've often find sets of three work well, so I'll create three color variants. To do this, I just copy the old layer, then slide through the hues, only focusing on the primary colors. Once I find the right primary color, I will quickly connect or, or correct or change colors that were messed up from the hue change. I went with the classic blue and yellow for this one. Do not worry about using popular color combos. They are popular for good reason, and you can always add your own touch to make it more unique and more to your own style. I was pretty much happy with this blue variant, but I will still do another one. You never know that next color combo might just be the best. So I went for white and red for the next one. Now that I've got three color variants, I simply line them up and you guessed it, take a break. Come back to decide on which one you want to use. You know, for me, the blue one looked the best. So Pikachu, I choose you. Now for those of you who just can't wait to start 3D modeling, now's a perfectly fine time to take your concept into Blender. But I'm going to add a little bit more detail and further detail will help clarify what material should be where and perhaps add some finer details or lighting choices. Now, before we texture the gun, we have two choices to make. A simple, you know, cartoon render or more realistic and lighting accurate render. This will depend on your own style, but for me, I normally use this good rule of thumb, which is um, if it's purely just for concept art, so just for 3D modeling, keep it simple. Instead of, you know, lighting, rather draw it from a different angle, maybe like a top view or a bottom view, you know, a front view. These different views will make modeling it in 3D way easier with far less guesswork. However, if this art is going to be displayed as a loading screen or splash art, then take some time and treat it as its own individual artwork. This goes without saying, but the latter option will take far more time and will require good understandings of painting fundamentals, which deserves a video on its own. So to keep this video under 30 minutes, I will just choose to do a quick cartoon render, only adding slight detail to the main parts. Now, be careful of rushing this last part. Oftentimes we have spent so much time on the sketch and the line art and the planning that we just can't wait to finish the piece. But if you end up rushing this last part, all that hard work of planning will just go to waste. You know, it's like rushing to cook a cake in the oven. If you just burn it, you know, what was the point of mixing all those ingredients? So practice some restraint and take your time. This part of the process is by far the longest, especially when you're doing a detailed paint. But there we go. Finally, we have finished our concept weapon and I will show you the base color model, the cartoon render, and then I also did a realistic render. Each type has its own purpose and with each step, the amounts of time needed will drastically increase. Okay, I have quickly dropped a lot of information in a very short amount of time. So to prevent brain overload, allow me to do a recap of the core skills we've used. Step one, 
gather reference for inspiration and the style that you aim to achieve. Step two, find a base gun to modify or change. I usually use real life weapons, but you know, using weapons from video games or movies will work just as well. Step three, draw out a few ideas remembering to follow anchor points, repetition and detail balance are the key points for this part. Step four, once you're happy with the design, take some time to clean up the sketch and make any last changes. At this point, focus on proportions and practical design. Step five, once you're happy with the final design, ink out the sketch, paying close attention to line hierarchy. Remember, big lines on the outside and small lines on the inside. Step six, using color theory and the hue tool, cook up a few color alterations. And at this point, when you're done with the color combos, you can take your art to the 3D viewport to begin modeling. Step seven, the Sunday of steps, the final render. Take your time detailing and painting your gun. This step has no end. You can always add more detail. You know, you can always render something with uh, better lighting, better technical skills. So it's up to you to decide when the piece is truly finished. And there we go. That is how I plan my concept weapons. So I hope you found this video helpful. And if there is an audience for this kind of content, I will look at making the part two to this video where I start to model the gun in Blender. Many of my explanations were generalized, but it is tough compressing you know, hours of work into a single video. So if I missed anything, please drop a comment down below as it will help everyone and anyone struggling then can just read the comments. And remember, there is no substitute for practice. Tutorials and knowledge are only a small part of the process. So don't worry if you don't get on the first try, it'll take time. Don't compare yourself to others, rather compare yourself to where you were last week. Whenever I feel that my art sucks, or I just can't do it. I have a quick look at some of my oldest works and it always helps me to stay positive. I will hold back some of the cringe and show you some of my oldest works. And warning, they are horrible. And I don't mean it like when every artist says, oh no, I can't draw, and then proceeds to draw an amazing piece. No, these are like truly bad. So, you know, as long as you're improving, you're heading in the right direction. Okay, let me not waste any more of your time. So as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. And best of luck with your future projects.